It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding! Hey there, this is Eric Keller for Entomology Animated. This is the next chapter in my Rainbow Scarab modeling project. So I want to bring you up to date on what I've done so far and what I need to do next. So uh, what I've got here is a decent model of a Rainbow Scarab beetle. The problem is, is this model is based entirely on Google images. So images that I found through doing searches on this particular species. And uh, that's good enough for doing an okay model, but you run into a wall the minute you try and get something that is closer to being anatomically correct or anatomically precise. That's where I'm at right now. Uh, most people, when they take pictures of bugs and upload them to the internet, I uh, like to take pretty pictures, and pretty pictures of bugs usually mean the top of the bug or the side, but rarely do you get good images of, say, the mouth parts, or the legs, or the abdomen, and other parts, those hard to reach areas. Um, it's hard to find good reference on it. So, what is the solution to this? The solution is to go online and order some specimens so that you can look at them under a microscope. So, my uh, go-to place for getting specimens is the Butterfly Company. So that's the butterflycompany.com. They have a great selection of specimens. These are all deceased specimens, of course, but you can um, order these online and they're really cheap. You know, $3, $5, $10, $12. Um, they're not that expensive and they ship them to you fairly quickly and they come in good shape. They're a great company. I highly recommend them. Very pleased with everything that I've ever gotten from them. So big, uh, I have to recommend them. Here's my little rainbow scarab beetle. Uh, they did a great job. So now that I have some dead bugs to play with, I can take them on under my microscope. As you can see, here's a picture of my microscope with lots of little disgusting dead bug parts underneath. So you can see here's the head of my rainbow scarab right here and its bodies and its legs. So kind of chopped up. I got four of them. So I have a few that are intact and others that if they fall apart, it's not the end of the world. And others I can chop up so I can look at specific pieces. So, um, and then I've got some other bugs here, some other beetles and wasps and that kind of stuff. As long as they don't fall into my coffee, um, it's usually pretty good. However, it can be a little bit gross when you have this litter of dead bugs everywhere. Um, in any case, so I have my stereoscopic dissecting microscope that allows me to see these um, close up in three dimensions. Of course, I also can take pictures. So I took my own pictures, brought them into Lightroom here, and just did a little bit of color correction. None of these images are going to win photography contests. That's not really the point. They're just good enough for me to get a sense of the anatomy so I can pull them up while I'm sculpting. I haven't done any um, focus stacking or anything like that. Maybe at some point I will, because you can see that it is very shallow depth of field. So some parts do get hidden. But you know, now at least I have some reference that is much better than what I had before and I have complete control over it. So you can see on these, uh, now I can take a look at what's going on on the underside and I can see how incredibly wrong my model is. So you can see all these wonderful shapes right here that I need to sculpt into my version. You can see here, now you can see the eye a little bit better. Uh, some images I can get a better sense of the faceting of the eye. Here's the antenna. My antenna, my previous version was completely wrong. It had kind of weirdly flattened out. But you can see now I can see the facets on the eye of the actual omatidia. Um, you know, of course it's a dead bug, so the coloration is going to be a little bit off and they're going to be somewhat desiccated. So you kind of have to take that into account. Now, live bugs are always the best reference, but they do have a tendency to squirm and run around and fly away. So you, you just take what you can get or do the best job that you can with what you have. But I'm very excited now that I have better reference. So I'll be working on the, using these as I sculpt the inside of the beetle, especially the underside here of the mouth. You can see here's the bottom of the eye right here. Here's this mouth part. We have the palps, the antenna, the underside. You can see all the hairs. The hairs often grow in very specific ways in insects. So now that I have that reference, it makes it a lot easier. Now you can sort of see the abdomen, the different divisions of the abdomen, and then the legs. Even, you know, it's still, some parts are gonna be hard to figure out. Even if I have this and I can take it under the microscope, some parts are still gonna be challenged, especially these parts where we have lots of hair. It can get difficult to sort out. But 
like I said, doing better than I was. Thanks for listening. Um, I'm excited to get in here and start fixing all my egregious anatomical errors and getting this closer to being correct. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna focus just on the head and the mouth parts and I'll leave this part for later. I'm just gonna start with what I know I can figure out and work my way into the mystery areas one step at a time. So that's coming up next. Thanks again for watching. If you're craving more information, detailed information on how I go about modeling uh, CG insects, please check out the hyper-realistic insect design video series that I created for the Nomen Workshop.